I don't know about you, but I really like to know what's going on inside my engine. I don't like taking things at face value when it comes to an engine. So when I got my 1.4 TFSI Audi engine, I noticed it had this two cylinder mode that would flash up periodically on the dashboard. So I just set about investigating that and understanding what these systems are, how they work, increase our understanding of the combustion engine itself. And also we can drive with a little more mechanical sympathy, knowing why it's there and what it's doing and maybe get us to adjust our driving style very slightly to maximize the benefits that this cylinder deactivation technology gives us. So the name of the cylinder deactivation technology really depends which brand you go to. I'm going to primarily talk about the Volkswagen Group, but a lot of other manufacturers have also got similar cylinder deactivation technologies. And just to confuse everyone, the Volkswagen Group, they call it ACT Active Cylinder Technology on the Volkswagen cars. If you've got an Audi model, it'll be referred to as cylinder on demand. So even within the umbrella organization of a car manufacturer, they give these technologies different names. So let's just look at cylinder deactivation, what it is, how it works, and what it's actually there in our car engines for. So in its simplest form, cylinder deactivation technology deactivates cylinders. That's why they've given it such an amazingly imaginative name. So if you've got a four cylinder engine and you're driving along, it will periodically cut down two cylinders and you'll just be running on two cylinders. So effectively your 1400 cc engine will be a 700 cc engine some of the time. Is that a good thing? Why do they actually do that? How does cylinder activation and deactivation know when to cut in and when not to cut in. And are there certain times where it might be harmful to your engines and be running on just two cylinders? So let's think about the problem we've got with the combustion engine. So the airflow into the engine is controlled with a butterfly valve. So if that valve is partially open, it's creating a lot of extra turbulence on the air that's flowing into the engine. So that's just really the nature of the combustion engine and the way it works. You control the airflow going into the engine and it's done by means of this butterfly valve, which is rather crude, but it's very simple and it's worked for many, many years. So this is why manufacturers use it. But the turbulence created decreases the efficiency of the engine. So by using just two cylinders, it makes the engine more efficient, more economical. So just for argument's sake, and I'm plucking figures out of the sky here, let's just say your 1400cc engine produces 140 horsepower. So if you're running at half power, the four cylinders are pushing out 70 horsepower. If you cut that down to two cylinders, the two cylinders producing 70 horsepower will be operating at maximum capacity. So four cylinders at 50%, is equaling your 70 horsepower, but two cylinders at 100% equals the 70 horsepower. So why would you want to focus all of the power on just two cylinders of the engine? And which two cylinders do they choose? Does it move around? Well, in the Volkswagen setup particularly, it is cylinders one and four that are always on, and cylinders two and three will periodically shut down. So they do this, as we've already said, so they can work in a higher load range. So this higher load range is making the engine work a little harder, but more efficiently. You're using more of the capacity of the cylinders. They're not running at half capacity to produce half the power. They're now running at near full capacity to produce nearly half the power. So why is this good? Well, you have less heat losses. The combustion process is only going on inside two cylinders. So it's only leaking away from those two cylinders. So your thermal efficiency of your engine is going to be increased. The volumetric efficiency is also going to improve. So these two cylinders are working harder. More air is going into them. That butterfly valve is in an open position, allowing the maximum airflow into the cylinders. So the cylinder pistons and everything inside the engine is doing a 100% effort to produce this half load of power. So does it reduce the friction? Well, not really, because the other pistons in the cylinders are still moving up and down. So there's still an element of friction. So what's happening to create this situation where just two cylinders are moving? Well, cylinders two and three basically have the valves closed. Does this actually cause problems inside the engine having the 
valves close. Surely the air that's inside the cylinder is still going to be compressed by the piston. And yes, it is being compressed by that piston that's going up. There's no combustion process going on in that chamber. But like a spring, as that air charge is compressed, as soon as the cylinder starts moving in the other direction, it acts like a spring pressing the cylinder back. So there's very little loss in terms of the efficiency of the engine just by running on two cylinders. I'm really not going to go into the nerdy aspects in percentages. We're going to talk about these very rough categories. And I've mentioned already that it produces 50% of the power. Well, it obviously scales. It'll produce anything up to 50% of the power from those two cylinders. And there's some other considerations to take into account. But we're just going to focus on the premise of having cylinder deactivation technology so that we can properly understand what's going on inside the engine. So do you actually notice it cutting in? Well, if you are a sensitive driver, well attuned to your car, you will notice the engine note changes very slightly. You're now firing on just two cylinders. So instead of four explosions going on every cycle of the engine, you've only got two explosions going on. So that is going to change the tone of the engine. There's also a very slight vibrational wobble that you feel as it transitions between two cylinders and four cylinders. But most drivers won't notice that in everyday driving. You need to be particularly attuned to the engine. It is incredibly quick and incredibly smooth. And as soon as you go back on the throttle and want power, the other cylinders come on stream really, really quickly. There are some requirements that the car has to meet before the cylinder on demand cuts in. So firstly, the engine needs to be up to an operating temperature. So this is looking at the oil temperature of the engine, not the coolant temperature. So the dashboard display may actually show just one light if you're like me, and the cylinder deactivation will still cut in on that providing the oil temperature is sufficiently high. The RPMs of the engine need to be at least 1,250. Any lower than that, the imbalances in just running on two cylinders will probably cause the engine to stall and it will certainly not run very smoothly. And at the upper end, we've got a limit of about 4,000 RPM. So going beyond that is putting an extra strain on the valve train components when running in two cylinder mode. The lambda regulation in the exhaust, the, the closed loop system, needs to be in operation for the cylinder deactivation technology to cut in and start working. So if you're enjoying periods of spirited driving or erratic driving, so it will look at your throttle positions and it will also look at the steering movements, whether you're making fast, jerky steering movements. All of these can be an indicator that you are wanting performance from the engine. So you will not get performance from a two cylinder setup. So it will switch back into four cylinder mode if it detects that your mood is where you want this spirited driving. As soon as you go on the throttle and you exceed the capability of the two cylinders to produce enough torque or enough power, the four cylinders will cut in to provide that extra power. I understand that the maximum rotational torque created in two cylinder mode is about 85 Newton meters. And if you exceed that, you're going to switch to the four cylinder mode. And also, interestingly, if you're on downhill, the vehicle tilt sensors and the various wheel sensors will actually tell the ECU that you're going downhill. Now, on a hill, you want some engine braking and you're not going to get very effective engine braking if you're just running on two cylinders. So the cylinder deactivation will stop working when you're traveling downhill. So how does it work? Well, the camshaft has lobes which open and close the valves. In the cars equipped with this cylinder deactivation technology, there is an additional blank without the lobe on the cam. So when the cylinder deactivation is required, it will switch along and move the cam lobe out of the way, moving this blank profile in. And the upshot of that will be that the valve stays closed on the intake and the exhaust. This happens very quickly, very seamlessly on just one revolution of the crank. So cylinders two and three have mobile cam carriers and cam actuators, which enables this cam lobe to be locked in place or not as required. To smooth things out, the ignition timing is also adjusted. So you're looking generally at an advanced ignition timing in two cylinder mode. So just thinking about the four cylinder engine, you've got four ignitions per crankshaft rotation. You've now got just two ignitions per crankshaft rotation. So the aim is to provide the same amount of power on just two cylinders. So the air supply is increased. The ignition timing is also advanced. And this happens so quickly 
you don't notice it. The car will produce sufficient power to keep your momentum to maintain the torque level that you'd required at that point. So won't running on two cylinders cause lots of imbalances and vibrations within the engine? Well, it will. If you've ever driven a three cylinder engine, you'll know just how unbalanced they can be. And a two cylinder engine is even less balanced. But the Volkswagen Group in particular, as we're discussing their engines, have fitted a very clever dual mass flywheel that is optimized to minimize these forces that are generated by a two cylinder operation. So the dual mass flywheel effectively has two plates to absorb the extra vibrations and smooth things out. I've had some interesting feedback where people have switched to a solid mass flywheel that was lighter and they said that's had no detrimental effect on the vibrations. So I've not tried that myself. I can't personally vouch for that. My advice had traditionally always been to avoid going to a single mass flywheel on these engines. But according to a few people I've spoken to, it's not a major issue. The engines are still quite refined and quite smooth. So the exhaust pulses are quite vital for the engine scavenging effect. As the cylinder empties, it requires a vacuum after the exhaust pulse to just fully empty that cylinder. So what happens now in the two cylinder setup is the pulses are spread out much further. There's a bigger gap between those pulses. So to mitigate the problem and to improve the scavenging effect, the exhaust system has been redesigned, so the midsection has been optimised to maintain velocity and flow. The bore size overall is slightly narrower than you might expect, again, to increase the velocity and maintain a decent flow from the exhaust. So that allows the turbo to maintain its fast spool up characteristics. Now, it's a very clever system. It actually requires, when I was researching this, I found about eight different types of sensor that are feeding information in to make this happen. So if there's a problem with any one of those sensors, if it's not working or if it's giving bad signals to the ECU, the whole cylinder deactivation system is going to stop working. So if you notice that the cylinder deactivation is not working, it's not due to the reasons that we mentioned at the start of this video. There may well be an issue with one of the sensors in your engine. So I just hope this has been informative to you. Please boot that like button. If you want to know more about your car and how these engines work, please subscribe to the channel. We would love you to stay tuned. And I've lined this video up for you that should help you to get the best performance and enjoyment from your engine. Thanks for watching. See you in this next video.